welcome to the Money Market Show. I'm your host, Paul LaJoy. With me today is, is Kristen Cut Donica. <laughs> Kristen Donica. <laughs> Kristen is one of the best in the industry. She's with Lemon Wholesale. We are the industry leading turn times. So if you're a real estate agent and you're watching this or listening to me on podcasts anywhere, you know that basically I'm interviewing somebody today who will make your deals close quick, fast. And if you want to increase your productivity in the next three months, whatever those months may be, by 20%, as much as 20%, you need to listen to this and you need to call me at 415 510-0127, I'm Paula Joy. Welcome to the show. Krista, how are you? I'm doing great. Happy Monday, and thanks for having me. I um, mean, yeah, I'm so excited. So I've been talking to you on the phone, but I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know all you look like and all that stuff. <laughs> so now I see you. You're looking really pretty and uh, really nice. Okay, cool. And lady in red. Okay, so that's what it is. <laughs> okay. So, Krista, you are with Women Wholesale. That's right. Yes, I am, and have been for about three years. Three years. Okay, cool. So, you you were telling me before our show today that you know real estate like the back of your hand. So, it looks like you've been in real estate for a long time. Yes, actually, uh, I was a real estate agent back in the uh, downturn. So, I definitely know um, what the real estate agents go through. I know about contracts, and I know the pressures that they get. That's interesting because on Friday last week, I was in Burlingame, right? And I, to meet up with uh, a group, okay, with Keller Williams, Keller Williams, okay? So this top group over there, they control like an 11% of the market share there. And the first question I asked them was, <laughs> what are your pain points? <laughs> pain points in this market, right? And the chief of the group said, Paul, education. You got to educate clients, right? Number one is the uncertainty in the market. And number three is the rates, <laughs> interest rates. <laughs> and I said, I'm here to educate, to enrich, and to empower. So when you said you know the pain points of realtors, I mean, just amazing. So we, it's a birth of a feather. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's many things that the real estate agents can and cannot control. Um, we as me as a wholesale rep. So I've been doing this for about 30 years and um, been in and out of, uh, you know, retail, wholesale, broker. It's just all the, the, the aspects of this business. And um, we can't control interest rates. But the good news is, you can always refi. So I, I have, even though I'm not, um, I'm in wholesale. So I'm the girl behind the scenes. I'm, I'm your backup, right? Yes. Um, I still get those questions from family and friends. When's a good time to buy? And I said yesterday. And they, well, the interest rates are so high. And as, as bad as this cliche is, I'm going to say it. Marry the house, date the rate. Yes. And that very slowly. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because you can always refinance. So the house of your dreams is sitting there waiting for you, but you're waiting for the rates to go down. Just, you know, there's an opportunity loss. There really is. We know the rates will come down. It's just a matter of time. It's going to happen. But your opportunity to get into that house is vital. So that's my approach. And if anything, at this time, and the real estate agents are probably telling the uh, the customers is you have more of a negotiation tool right now than you would when the rates are good and you have a lot of competition. So my advocate is, um, yeah, it's a pain point that we we encounter daily is the rates, but I have I feel like I have a solution to that, and um, I've got a product as well. So I want to talk to you about our standalone HELOCs. So right now, more than likely, 90% of clients have a really good first mortgage, but they don't have access to money that is quick. And they have, they want to maybe cash out on their first, you know, the house that they're in right now, their primary, in order to purchase the next house. And so, you know, bridge loans are going away and, and different options and they can't cash out. We have a standalone HELOC that allows them to get cash in five days. 
It operates much like a credit card where they're just entering data. We're electronically verifying. There's no appraisal. There's no title. There's really no underwriter because it's a computer generated system. And uh, we found that that's a, a big opportunity for those people trying to purchase homes and needing cash or fixing their house prior to them putting it on the market. Okay, good. So you mentioned, uh, before you started talking about HELOC, you mentioned something about what's happening in the market right now. This, this is a good time to buy. And you and I just closed our first transaction. And guess what? Just in the same neighborhood, just a few houses uh, on the street, if there is a property that's listed for 1.6, that's mm -hmm. all. Because the property that we just closed on was listed at 1.6, then they dropped the price to 1.499, you know, and they will made an offer for 1.45. They counted at 1.47, and then of course did, you know, go up to 1.5 to ask for the seller to credit the buyer. So when I went into the property yesterday, because I went to see the client, I went to, to the property and um, there was an agent. <laughs> she's a new agent. She's been in the and she's been in the industry for only two years. She was there, and I when I walked in, I said, "Hi, is the traffic?" <laughs> she says, "You're the you're the only one." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "You're the only one that has shown up so far." I said, "Yeah, I understand. Now is not the best time to do all these open houses, right?" Um, and then. I asked her, how long has this property been on the market? She said, four days. I said, no, you have to check your Zillow. This property <laughs> in the market. <laughs> I said, check your Zillow. This property is rocking for almost a month or more. Someone's wrong here. <laughs> yes, I saw, I saw, I saw it when, when we were in, in contract, you know, I saw it listed. And he said, oh, let me check. He said, I said, look at snapshot. I mean, it's, uh, what like home snap. And then you went and looked at home snap. I said, oh, yeah, you're right. It was on the market. They took it off the market. Then they put it back on the market. You know, they dropped the price. You know, and and they do an auction. Even though she do an auction, she started at one point four five zero. Come on, <laughs> this is a time that agents need to learn how to market properties. I did one video, and I said, "Stop dropping prices." There's absolutely no science to that, <laughs> right? You are going to show the seller. The seller is going to interview many people, and you say, "I am the neighborhood best." You know, a salesperson. I'm the neighborhood specialist. And you show all these, your track record. And then guess what? Then they're going to ask, okay, fine. They give you the listing. And you're excited. The first two weeks, oh, man, I got a listing. And I have an open house. After the first two weeks, you're not going to show up. Yesterday was not, yesterday, the agent that was there is a newbie. Where was a listing agent? <laughs> She's tired of this listing. <laughs> She's tired of this listing, right? So this is a market where buyers can come out, right? And take advantage for, because for the last 10 years, they've been priced out. For the last 10, 10 years, they've been treated like a piece of junk, you know, you know, by the sellers. This is a time for them to say, you know what? It's my turn. <laughs> it's my turn, right? Even my turn, right? You That open house, there's nobody showing up. And maybe the age, the listing agent or that agent that was showing the house, maybe she was dozing off even. And when she see a rat, a rat is passed by, oh, it's a buyer. <laughs> it's fire. I can make a joke out of this thing. It's not a buyer. It's a rat. It's a rat. <laughs> rat woke you up. <laughs> so this is a great market for the buyers to come in, get the discount. Get the sellers to pay yeah. for those closing costs. Yeah. And you only come in with what? You only come in with 10% down, or even if you do FHA, and maybe three and a half percent or nothing, right? It's a time yeah. where let me ask you this question. So, your company, what how much of a sell in terms of percentage? How much is a seller credit can you allow? Will you allow? Uh three percent. Oh, three percent. So somebody's buying a property for one million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's three percent of the purchase price, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. So, so a million dollars, the realtor can now ask for up to what thirty thousand dollars. 
Absolutely. Uh, I just got off the phone with another broker who actually got $30,000 of credit from the seller and the buyer backed out because, you know, from this or that. And I said, uh, what's that seller's phone number? I'd like to buy the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there are realtors out there that are actually turning down listings. The listing that I don't want to do a listing, right? Because I think the market is so bad. Somebody needs to tell them how they can sell these properties, right? How now is a time, for example, you talked about Helox earlier. I was telling these guys um, in Birmingham the other day, I said, how much is your average value of a property, a value of an average property in your area? They said 3 million. Okay, how much equity do you think they have in that property? They said 50%. So somebody has 50%, $1.5 million sitting in that property. Yeah. And it's not doing anything for them. So it's worse, it it's worse than the bank. Okay. It's worse than the bank. Because you can take that money out and go buy properties. And I just closed a transaction in uh Antioch, Okay. For 650. It's five bedrooms, three baths. Two-story building, 2,500 square foot. Why are your guys not taking money out of their your private residences and go and buying these properties, right? That is well, how. Yeah, there's money in there. They just don't want to touch their interest rates. So that's why there's a great opportunity for that HELOC. Um, when things turn around, you know, combine the first and the second into the, the low rate eventually. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I see you know, I, I see people not touching their first. Yeah, so nobody's asking them to touch their first. We're just telling them, we're telling the realtors, and I hope they're listening to this, because how do you boost your business by at least 20% in the next three months? So well, I have a good idea. Yes. I want to talk about the renovation loans. Okay. So renovation loans typically in the realtor's mind and the broker's mind are scary, Halloween scary, but they're not. And there's a lot of myth behind those. Um, renovation loans, what are those? We're not talking full construction. However, if you have a brand new construction that's 90% complete, I can do a renovation loan. So what that means is, uh, say some, one of your clients wants to, or the real estate client wants to purchase a house and they want to put in a pool. So we actually will extend the money based on either the lesser of future value or the acquisition cost plus the renovation cost, add those together, whatever the lesser of the two is, either future value or that, and we'll give them the money. So I've closed one with a new person in 22 days. So many realtors think, oh, one, it's a long process. Two, it's difficult. Nope. These are either FHA, or, which is 203K, or their home style, which is conventional. So we have two different types. Um, at the same time, just want to put out that caveat that, you know, if you want to refinance and do a renovation loan, no problem. But why is a property not selling? There's three reasons why a property won't sell. It is going to be location, condition, and price. So if you have the location and the price down, sometimes it's the condition. And I would venture to say if there's a roof like blown off, um, you aren't going to get that funded anything other than cash or hard money or renovation money, which is something that we do. We even have a renovation uh, concierge service that takes care of the paperwork. So it's that much easier for you guys. Okay, let's talk about, I think you just gave us a summary, but I want to, I want people to understand these things and I'll go back to HELOC later on. Okay, so basically for renovation, since you just talked about that, you know, um, this is not, is it a jump, is it for jumbo loans, is it for FHA or unconventional what, and then it's food dock versus no food dock, yeah. if an investor wants to do it, does it work, it has, does it have to be a primary residence, let's break it down. So we can do it. Uh, it's going to be full doc. So this is a standard FHA and a standard conventional loan. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be full doc. We can do them up to high balance for both. Even if you wanted to add on an ADU, additional dwelling unit, we can yes. do that for conventional. 
So FHA never allows for luxury items. So you're not going to be putting a basketball court or a tennis court with an FHA loan. However, you can with the conventional. The conventional allows you to um, basically upgrade the property while, while you're purchasing it. You can do it, it with a second home and you can do it with an investor property, right? So the LTVs are a little bit lower than that. Okay, cool. So second home and investor investment property, right? Absolutely. You allow like two or three K loan, the renovation yes. loan on there. Yes. So we Oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 hold on. So FHA does not allow for multiple properties. So FHA is for primary residents only. They yes. will not allow for any investments. So investments in second homes are gonna be conventional. Yeah, exactly. That's what you said. That's yes. what you said. Second homes and investment properties. That's for conventional, and it will also go even at ADU, so long as they meet the loan balance or loan limit for that particular county. Absolutely, right. yeah. county loan limits. Okay, cool. And I know that these county limits are going up. Okay, so these these are going up. So have you guys faced in the yes. new limits yet? Yes. You're taking applications already. Yes. Oh yeah, for funding. Is that for conform? Is that for conforming or is that for high balance? Conforming for right now, high balance has not released. Okay, until after Thanksgiving. We anticipate them to do after Thanksgiving. Okay, great. So, all right. So that's it for. Uh, so I know that there are two kinds of okay, two or three k loans. Is that correct? There's one that's streamlined. Yes. And there's one that's standard. Yes, so one's called limited. Limited is total cost, renovation money, 35,000 and under. You don't need what's called a HUD consultant. A HUD consultant is somebody that governs the work of the contractor. So when I say 35,000 of renovation money, it's not 35,000 of uh, boards and labor and, and things like that. It's 35,000 of permits, contingencies, um, draws, all that. So I'd start at 30,000 and kind of work your way up. Um, anything past that is going to be considered standard and you do need a HUD consultant. So the first part about this uh, loan is really getting a bid. We, we really don't know anything until you actually get a bid. And I have, um, I have sample bids on my website as well. So a uh, great resource. Okay, good. All right. So is there a loan limit to this amount? When is standard? Uh, standard is going to go to the county loan limits based on the zip code. I see. So you can, um, you know, with, up to the loan limits is where- Okay, up to the loan limits. So basically it doesn't matter if you bought the property for $600,000 and you need to spend uh, $300,000, you know, for conversion. I'm talking about conventional, right? The standard one, okay. You bought a property six hundred thousand dollars, and you're spending three hundred thousand dollars. That's nine hundred thousand dollars in our county, right? The loan limit as of now for high balance is nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars. So long as you are within that loan limit, it doesn't matter how right. much your reservation cost is. Is that correct? Yes and no. So yes to the first part. No to we don't go past two hundred thousand dollars. That's what I wanted to know. Okay, so $200,000 of renovation money is going to be more than six months of work generally. And that's where we get a little concerned. We go, you know, six to eight months, but we don't want this to be a full-blown construction project. It's just temporary money to get you, you know, on your way. Okay, cool. So, and this can apply whether you're buying a property or you are renovating it as your primary residence or if you're selling it? Um, so we don't do loans that are listed for sale. So if you want to get it ready to sell, then yeah, absolutely. And you put the sign up after we're done, no problem. I do want to tell you is if you have a property that is currently inhabited, that you can include six months of payments when we fund the loan, six months of your PITI into the renovation costs. Now it will take away from others, 
you know, due to loan limits and things like that, but we can do that, you know, say the utilities are off or, you know, there's no water right now. So, um, yeah, we can do that as well. Okay, cool. But, but this two or three K loan is basically, I think is beneficial to someone who wants to buy, especially in this market, you know, where sellers are motivated. Yes. Okay, and you, the buyer, and you, the agent, your client has the upper hand. So basically, you can now go and get the credit from the seller, and then you can have the money also to rehab this property with a two or three K loan to the best of the the client's needs. So the client wants this this kind of paint color. Or this kind of floor and whatever kitchen, it's up to them. It's not like sub. I used to flip. Cosmetic is fine. Yeah. I used to flip properties before, and I remember one property that I flipped in Oakland, and the guy didn't like my floors. As soon as he he acquired the property, he removed the floor and materials, and like that's waste of money there, right? And, and it, it happens like that. So this is a great time that. A real estate agent, especially who's representing the buyer, can say, you know what? Do you like this location? Right? You don't like the condition of the property. You don't even like the price. You can bargain on the price. Okay? And then the condition can be fixed. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you like the location? That's it. Purchase. Yep. Absolutely. And you get money up to $200,000. Okay? From with a bin, <laughs> with, yeah. a bin. <laughs> with a bin that makes sense. I don't want to see, uh, you know, <laughs> one two by four that look that is costing five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. So basically, you can need a hot consultant, right? So basically, nobody's taking anything. And then, don't they have draws? They have draws, right? You don't just yeah. check. Yeah. So yeah, the contractor check. sets up the draws. Right. Yeah. And then at the end, we'll do a final inspection. You and I know ten oh four D. Um, knowing that the property is completely, you know, completely uh, fixed and ready to roll. And quite technically, they can refinance right after that into a rate and term because uh, typically you already have a future value appraisal. You just need recerted. So there's other opportunities for this loan. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm, no, we're talking and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Um, we, you and I can produce short videos <laughs> like, called 10 ways to increase your business by as much as 20% in the next three months. You know, one could be this one, two or three K loan. And we're talking about the HELOC as well, right? So the HELOC yes. is a great way because if somebody, like I said, the property in Burlingame in Hillsborough is worth $3 million dollars. And they have so much equity in the property, and we know that values are going down a little bit. Why can't they just come to Christian, pull out four hundred thousand dollars, pull out four hundred thousand dollars, go buy that property in, in, in Pittsburgh, in Anya, buy the hospital, okay, which is kind of distressed right now, okay, buy four bedrooms, three baths for six hundred and fifty for seven hundred thousand dollars, go buy three of these ones. Because now we can use what I call DSCR, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Just the DSCR, debt service coverage ratio, and they only put 15% down. What do you allow? Uh, it's actually going to be 20% down. Okay, 20% down. Uh, so I can use, I can use uh, Airbnb money. So, exactly. um, you know, if, if that property had been, you know, Airbnb, we just let the appraiser know. Hey, here's their, you know, you can get actually a, um, a rent schedule from that. Uh, this is a, it's a lot of, if you, if you don't know, audience, what an investor cash flow or DSER is, it's primarily, you know, say Paul wants to build or wants to purchase the building that he's currently in, commercial building. No one's taking a look at his personal income, but they're taking a look at what the mortgage is against the rents that he's going to receive. So if he buys the the commercial building for a thousand a month, right, is the PITIA, and he receives rents a thousand a month, uh, it cash flows. We don't care if you've lost your job. <laughs> wow, Krista, so that's really good, right? That we're talking about this. Like I said, you and I, this is the first video of many. So as we're talking, I have some 
or the idea is, like I said, 10 ways to increase your business by as much as 20% in the next three months, right? Yes. We are going to have a follow-up video and we can produce that sequence, okay? And so that people, realtors, so that our audience here can, can actually map, go there, go there and see how they can, for sure, they, they can increase their business by as much as 20% because 200 kilo, he log, DSCR, you know, bank statement, you should be working with seven employed people. I mean, different ways, Krista. I know. <laughs> no one just came. <laughs> All right, cool. So any parting words? Parting words is, if anything, continue to hustle. I also am an investor, and I also go out and look at properties. And I also see what the realtors are not doing that I did back in the day. And do what is different than the normal, you know, show up um, and go after these products that are available for you. It will be the differential difference that you will have up against your competition because you have competition and you know it. Every uh, friend has a realtor, relative has a realtor, they're using this and that. I encountered that same thing. But the one thing that made me different is what I knew and what I was willing to do opposite of my competition. So go after it, hustle. Awesome, awesome.